Hey guys, Nick here. In this screencast, we're going to show you how to call smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain from front-end JavaScript code. We're going to introduce you to some helper libraries that's going to make it pretty easy for us to go ahead and wrap all of the functions available to us within any given smart contract and go ahead and start using that smart contract. So here I am, I'm on Stack Starter. We're gonna to continue to build off of the application that we've been building from previous videos. I'm gonna go ahead and dive right into our vanilla stack, stack here. If you do wanna play along with this, the information in the video description uh, regarding how to get an environment like this spun up. Uh, basically, we're using VS Code right in the browser here. All right, so where did we leave off? So we have this application super simple application we have the ability to connect to our wallet so we're connected to our wallet we can check our balance we can send a transaction all pretty much all of the output right now is happening right on the console so if we open up our console here you can see that our d app is loaded and the accounts are changing and we should have an accounts array here um, awesome so we're looking good we have a, a small app running here we're able to connect to the network and now really the superpower here that we're about to explore, which is super exciting, is calling into smart contracts. So smart contracts are basically pieces of software that live on the blockchain. So we can call into them to manipulate them or, or, or check certain values within them. Um, really, depending on how the smart contract is developed is how uh, we, would, we would choose to use it. So there are a couple of things that we need as dApp developers in, in order to actually call into smart contracts. Really kind of two core things and, and one tertiary thing as we start to introduce some of these, these libraries. The first thing is the actual contract address. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to call into an ERC-20 token address. So this is a smart contract that follows the ERC-20 standard. What the heck is the ERC-20 standard? The ERC-20 standard is basically a standard that defines a standard token interface. So all of the altcoins and things like that that you see out there today are um, mostly developed using the ERC-20 standard. This defines a bunch of functions, if we look at the methods here, uh, that describe the actual token and also keep track of the token for given addresses. So we could see things like the symbol, the, the number of decimals that it goes out to, its total supply, the balance of the, of the token for any given address. We have the ability to transfer tokens. We can transfer from other addresses if we're approved to do so. So this standard set of functions, and there's really not many of them. Uh, there's not a lot of these functions. Um, this, by defining these functions in your smart contract, you can now interoperate with other smart contracts in a very predictable way. So it's very powerful because now you could do things like take this token and provide liquidity on maybe a, a DeFi application. Um, and you can you know, transfer tokens back and forth to other smart contracts. Um, or other smart contracts can develop on top of you and know how to call into you. So super powerful stuff. So the functionality we're going to show off today is going to call into one of these functions for a smart contract that we already deployed to the Gorelli test network. So this is a test network that's available to us as we kind of play with smart contracts and different applications on Ethereum. And here we have a token we deployed, the Long Island blockchain token. So this is a, a smart contract that we have running on the test net. And we could see some activity here. I'm not sure why it doesn't show the holders max supply because there are holders and there is a you know we've been distributing these in in different meetups so i'm not sure why we're not seeing these here you can see that the distribution's happening um but in any event the first thing what we're going to need in order to call a smart contract is the contract address anybody see where that is right here right boom this is the contract address so i'm going to go ahead and copy this and we're gonna dive into our code here. And I'm gonna go into our JavaScript and let's go to the top here. And this is going to be a constant at the top. So we're gonna say const libc address equals, and we'll just go ahead and we'll paste that in there as a string. Awesome. 
So we have the first part. So this is the, the first, first piece of the puzzle. It is our address. Okay, the second piece of the puzzle. What's the second thing we need to be able to call into a smart contract? So smart contract defines functionality, but how do we know what that functionality is on the front end? We really don't, right? So like if we look at the smart contract code here, uh, which we actually don't see here, but on most tokens you would see them, uh, it's compiled down into bytecode that runs on the EVM, right? The EVM is the Ethereum virtual machine that is running on all of the nodes on the network, and that's what actually executes the code. So by just looking at that bytecode, we're not gonna have really a good idea where we actually need to call into these this software and how to actually use it. So what we need in order to do this is called an application binary interface. That's a fancy word for basically a list of functionality for the contract in just a text format. Now this text format is a JSON file. A JSON file is basically kind of a serialization of a an object. And we can, uh, for an ERC-20 token, there basically is a standard interface. So we can use any standard ERC-20 ABI. And I do have one available here. I will link it in this video below. And this is a standard ABI for an ERC-20 token. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the raw values here. I'm gonna go ahead and select all and copy this. And now this looks like a, a lot of information, but it basically is just defining all of the functions and their inputs and their outputs. That's it. It's basically des de describing these function signatures that we see here. So there's a total supply function. It doesn't take any parameters, but it returns an unsigned integer. So it's basically just describing that, but in a more kind of verbose format here in JSON. So we can go ahead and copy this, and I'm gonna go into our code here. Now typically, we're kind of just experimenting here and learning the fundamentals, so we're working out this knowledge in these scripts. In a, in a larger application or a production application, you'd probably split this out into different files and include them and things like that. We're not gonna get into the, the, those types of complications. We're just gonna go ahead and say constant LIBC ABI is equal to, and we'll go ahead, we're not gonna make this a string because we'll make this an actual, it'll be an array with a bunch of objects inside of it. So we'll just keep it like that. This file's gonna get a little, busy here with this in here, but now we have the second thing we need. So this is the second piece of the puzzle. If I could type, second piece of the puzzle. Our ABI, Application Binary Interface. Okay, awesome, so now we have that. Now, we could use the Ethereum provider that we've been using directly and call a specific method. Now there are different JSON API endpoints that we would hit on a, on a given Ethereum node when we're calling into smart contracts, depending on the type of method that we're calling. The method is just a view method that we're just reading data from. We could just we could just use a call, um, but there are, are other methods we can call to be able to manipulate things. Like if we were actually changing the state of the smart contract, we would have to send up ether for the price of gas um, and parameters for what we're trying to do. Like for example, if we're trying to send a token. In this video, we're going to just call a basic view function that will not cost any gas. And we're just going to check the balance of our LIBC token for our given wallet. And we can see that here in, in MetaMask, I have the LIBC address loaded right here. So we have a ton of LIBC here. So what we expect to see is the same value we see here when we call into it from our web app. Awesome. So now what's this third piece? In order to make this a little bit easier for us, what we're gonna do is we're going to introduce a tool set or a library that's going to enable us to kind of wrap this contract into a nice little object that we can just call functions from, or call methods from. So there are a couple of pretty popular libraries out there today, um, one of them being Web3.js and the other being Ethers. Now, I'm gonna choose Ethers for this screencast today because I think um, it does, in the, in the documentation here, it includes a nice uh, UMD file here, nicely minified. It looks like to use Web3 currently, you do need to run Webpack and, and build it from Node. I don't wanna go into all that. I wanna focus on 
the Ethereum knowledge here, right? So there are a bunch of resources to learn that specific type of stuff. I think this is, I wanna keep this focused on the Ethereum stuff. So Web3.js, we're gonna, we're gonna not look at that one right now, and we're gonna look at Ethers. Now, if you go to the Ethers documentation, which I linked right below, you can see here that it does have this little script that we can include right off of the CDN. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that, and we're gonna go back to our code and I'm gonna go into our HTML and I'm gonna put that right before the main JS. And one other thing I'm gonna do while I'm in the HTML here is I'm actually gonna move our scripts to the body. So I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna move our scripts down to the last set of elements right before where we close the body. This is just gonna ensure that our scripts are loaded a little bit differently um, and we'll be able to ensure that all of the content is loaded on our page. Uh, before the scripts run. So that's looking good. So now we have ethers on the page and we have our main JS file right below it. Now let's go back to our JavaScript here. And now the third piece that we need is, whoa, there's a lot of ABI stuff going on here. The third piece that we need is going to be our provider. Now the provider is basically just gonna be a wrapping around the Ethereum provider that MetaMask has already injected into the browser. Now, a few versions back, I believe about a year ago now, MetaMask used to inject Web3.js with the plugin itself. It does not do that anymore. So we need to, if we wanna use these libraries, we need to actually instantiate them and, and tell the library that we're using MetaMask. So I'm gonna just say, let's, provider here. I'm not going to define it just yet. And then down in our window.onload, right after we do our check to make sure that we actually have Ethereum, the Ethereum object injected into our browser, I'm going to go down here and we're going to say, let's go ahead back to our documentation here. And right here is where the magic happens. So here we're going to say new ethers.providers.web3provider window.ethereum. So we could take this little guy right here, copy this, and bring it right here, and we're gonna say provider equals ethers providers web3 provider. So now we have our provider. And we can kinda just prove that out real quick just by a, a, doing a simple console.log maybe, just to make sure that we actually have it. And we'll console.log the provider here. Okay, so let's see what we get here. And there we go, we have our Web3 provider. And you can see the connection is a MetaMask connection and we are good to go. Now we can use this provider to call into smart contracts with ethers. Let's see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and go back to our code. I'm gonna take that console.log out because we don't need it. Okay, now, we want to call into a contract. So what do we do here? So now we have all three pieces in place. We have our contract address, we have our application binary interface, and we have our provider. Now we can leverage ethers to be able to call into contracts. And let's go ahead and look at some of these docs here. So I think there probably is, oh, here we go. We're gonna go here, and then we're gonna go to contract. There we go. So we have to create an instance of a contract. And look at this. So the contract takes three parameters, an address, an ABI, and a signer or a provider. Cool, so we have all three now. We're, we're in good shape. So we're gonna go ahead and create an instance of a contract. Let's see what that looks like. So now I'm gonna create a new method all the way at the bottom. So we're gonna go all the way to the bottom of our script and we're gonna create a new function. And we're gonna call this function check, um, check LIBC balance. Okay, or maybe I'll call it, let's call it, we won't tie it to LIBC, we'll say check token balance, okay? So this can really be used, because we're using the ERC20 standard, this could be used for any token address. You just change that address and you'll be able to, call into any one of these. So make that a, I'm gonna make this an async function and go ahead and do this. 
Jeez, you can tell it's, it's late on a Friday right now. I'm not typing quick. Okay. So now we're going to create a new contract. So we're going to say let LIBC contract equal, and it's going to be ethers.contract. So we'll go ethers.contract, and we'll go ahead and give it the three things it needs. So what does it need here? It needs the address, the ABI, and the signer. So we're going to say LIBC address, LIBC ADI, and our provider. Boom. Now, if we console.log the LIBC contract, we should see all of the methods that are available to us from this smart contract. And we should be able to use this smart contract just like any other JavaScript object and call methods against it, which is kind of really cool. So we, we're not actually calling this bad boy yet, right? We still need to add something to our user interface. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Let's go back to our HTML and I'm going to go ahead and add another button here. We're going to call, we're just going to put another button right here and we're going to call them to check token balance. So we're going to do that and we'll make this to be check LIBC balance. Awesome. So now we should have a new button here. Check LIBC balance. If we hit it, Boom, we get an error. Ah, we're missing something. We're instantiating an object and we didn't say new. So we need to actually say new in our JavaScript. So we're gonna say new ethers.contract. Now let's see what happens. Boom, look at that. So what did I just do there? I just used the new keyword because we are instantiating a new object because once this runs, this bad boy is a nice little object that we can use now. So now if we look at this contract, look at this. We have all of the functions that we would expect from an ERC20 token. So now we can call into this guy and get some return values. Let's see if we could do that. Let's go ahead and we'll take this console.log out. And we're going to say let balance equal. And we'll go ahead and now use this contract just like any other contract. So let's go to the standard here and we want to get balance of. So we're going to get the balance of and we're going to give it an address of the balance that we're checking. So let's go ahead and say balance of and we know we already have the accounts list. So accounts sub zero and that should be it. Now this is going to be an async function. So we're going to say await oh, on that bad boy. And now let's go ahead and console.log the result. Let's see what happens. All right, we got a big number. So the big number object is basically just an object that will make, uh, allow us to support these larger numbers that tend to the 18th power in JavaScript. So what we could do here is we could just simply convert this to a string and we'll be able to see um, exactly what that balance is. So if I say balance dot two, String. We'll probably do a whole a whole video if pe people are interested in the the big number object just to talk about that a bit. So now if we go balance dot two string and we hit check balance, boom. Now if we compare that here, there we go. We are looking good. So now we have our balance. All right, awesome. We were able to call into a smart contract. So this is basically how you would call into a smart contract. Now we're using just one type of method. We're using just a view method with the smart contract. When we're using things like sending transactions and stuff like that, it's a little bit more in depth. We'll go into that probably in the next video. So definitely play along with me here if you're, you're not already. You can always pause if I'm moving a little too quick here. Um, any feedback, any questions, please post them in the comments below. I'm having a good time creating these. And, um, you know, any, any feedback that you can give just to, you know, lead us in different directions, I am totally open. And um, I hope you're finding these useful. This is very, very powerful. You can now call into any smart contract on the Ethereum network from JavaScript. We didn't do any smart contract development. You can actually just call into smart contracts that are already out there. 
right? So this is how, you know, folks called into like the CryptoPunks before there was a UI on it or any, any type of UI. You, can, you could call right into the contracts. So it's... um. It's it's a it feels like a superpower to me. So I'm I'm glad to share it here, and um, any questions, please don't hesitate. All right, guys, have fun. Thanks.